every new morning embraced. Every daily tradition continued. Every extra candle lit. Every new challenge accepted. And every obstacle overcome. Every moment is precious. That's why Breakthrough Cancer Research funds research into better, smarter and kinder treatments. Because every breakthrough brings us closer to 100% survival for 100% of cancers. Donate today at BreakthroughCancerResearch.ie. Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a plane RuneScape? Oh, who make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's Self Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> The traditional month for spring house cleaning is only four days away. In many homes this year, women won't be able to do so very much of that extra cleaning. War work, civilian defense, Red Cross, Victory Gardens, all these important activities are number one obligations. But in most of those homes, there's a silent partner helping to cut down on housekeeping work, helping to protect floors, furniture, and woodwork. That silent partner is Johnson's Wax. Day after day, month after month, it guards all kinds of surfaces, wood, leather, metal, against wear and dirt. An occasional application of either paste or liquid, Johnson's Wax gives not only protection, but great beauty to your home. Rooms can be kept in tip-top shape with less work. Many spring house cleaning chores become unnecessary. At no time in its more than 50 years of service has genuine Johnson's Wax been more helpful to homemakers than right now. When a man is all out of meat coupons and is hungry for a big, thick steak, his mouth is liable to water so much it drowns his conscience. So, as we glance down the alley behind the pool hall in Wistful Vista, we find a little business deal going on between a man who shall be nameless, though there is a number waiting for him, <laughs> and an old friend of ours, Mr. McGee, of Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. A big, thick porterhouse. Well, Molly loops a lip over this. I can hardly wait to fling a fang into it myself, bud. You sure this is good and tender, Mr... Uh... Just call me Eddie, chum. Oh. And don't worry about the steak. You just take it home, cook it about 45 minutes, smother it with onions, load it up with ketchup, and you never eat nothing like it. That'll be five bucks. <laughs> five bucks? Sure, you got over three pounds of steak there, Doc. Yeah, but, but, but the ceiling price is away. Yeah, don't give me that ceiling price business, Doc. I'm an alley butcher, and alleys don't have no ceilings. <laughs> oh, I just thought five bucks. I you? ain't charging no sales tax, am I? Well, no, but... I gee... didn't ask you for no coupons, did I? No, but, gee, I thought... Well, gee, I thought at least I'd like to have seen it before you wrapped it up so I could tell no, it. No, no, don't worry, Doc. That steak will make your eyes water. I mean your mouth. <laughs> and look, if any of your friends need anything, tell them to ask for Eddie, see? Oh, okay, Eddie. Well, I guess I better try at home and get this steak on ice. You ain't kidding, brother. <laughs> huh? I says no kidding, Doc. You're going to enjoy that steak. Well, so long. So long and much obliged, Eddie. Oh, boy, oh, boy, a three-pound porterhouse. <laughs> Don't catch me standing in line like a dummy. When I want something bad, I get it. <laughs> McGee, where are you? Here I am, Molly. I just put something in the refrigerator. It's a surprise for dinner tonight. Oh, a surprise? Yeah. Has one of your friends been on a hunting trip? 
No, but I have. Ha, this is really going to knock you over, baby. McGee, have you been buying Limburger cheese again? <laughs> no, sir, this is something you love. And don't ask me what it is. It's a surprise. And don't you go opening the package. Well, how do I know which package not to open? Well, it's wrapped in newspaper and fastened with a piece of tire tape. <laughs> it's about this big. <laughs> Who's that? Let me pee. Uh-oh, it's Abigail Uppington. Ah, uh, what's that old bat looking for? <laughs> a belfry? <laughs> hey, now, don't ask her for dinner. She eats too much. I know she does. You know, whenever I see anybody with a carriage like hers, I know they eat like a horse. <laughs> Come in. Well, for goodness sakes, Abigail, dear, what a surprise. Well, how do you do, my dear? And Mr. McGee. Hi, Abby. That's quite a fur jacket you got there. <laughs> you look like a perpendicular fox farm. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you, Uppy? If you looked any more upset, you'd have to walk on your hands. Oh, oh I am perturbed, Mr. McGee. Oh. I'm having a group of naval officers to dinner tonight. Oh, oh, oh well, they're used to having dinner in a mess. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Abigail? Oh, everything, my dear. I can't buy any meat. Oh, my. My butcher is entirely out. He says the black market is taking so much meat that the legitimate dealers have a hard time getting their quota. Well, be that as it may be or may not be or not, Uppy. It's all in knowing the right people. I can arrange for you to get some meat. What do you know about meat, McGee? You always thought Chuck Beep was off a steer named Charlie. <laughs> I just know my way around, that's all. If anybody wants meat, I know where they can get it. Now, look, Uppy, you're an old pal of mine. Uh, let's say acquaintance, Miss McGee. <laughs> my regard for you falls somewhat short of complete adoration. It does? Mm. <laughs> Well, that's darn decent of you, Uppy. <laughs> I always spoke well of you, too. Now, look, you know where the pool hall is on 14th Street, next door to the Friend and Need pawn shop? Why, certainly I know where the, um, I mean, I, I believe I could locate it. Well, all you gotta do is go down there, duck up the alley. Are you and... suggesting that Abigail duck up an alley, McGee? Well, how does she usually go up alleys on a calliope? <laughs> just sneak up the alley, Uppy, when nobody is watching, and there's a door at the end, see? You just whistle twice like a snipe. And a guy named Eddie will open the door. You tell him the trim... Mr. McGee, this sounds suspiciously like the black market to me. Don't be silly. This ain't a market at all. It's just a back room off the pool hall. <laughs> and it ain't black. It's a kind of a bilious green. <laughs> there used to be a bookmaker in there, and he McGee, was... McGee, how do you know all about this? How do I know anything? I have often wondered. <laughs> oh, I just go around with my ears and eyes to the ground, that's all. Now, look, Uppy... When you see this guy, Eddie, he whistles like a snipe, you see. You tell him you know me. You don't need any coupons. McGee, you don't... I don't like this. Well, gee whiz, if you really want meat bad enough, you got to do I something. don't want meat badly enough to patronize a back alley dealer, Mr. McGee. Do you think I could face those servicemen tonight after dealing in the black market? Oh, my gosh, Uppy, you said you Do you, you think that I would have the unmitigated effrontery to invite servicemen to dinner and serve them meat which was practically stolen from law-abiding citizens? Oh, gee whiz, To yes. offer them something which was damaging the legitimate business of the country they're fighting for? Well, gee whiz. If you do, Mr. McGee, <laughs> you know as much about me as a hyena knows about international law. And if you've read the reports from Japan the last few days, you know how much that is. Goodbye.
So you see, Molly, that's why I can't tell you about Eddie. It's a secret. Well, all right, but I wish you wouldn't recommend this, Eddie, whoever he is to our friends. He sounds pretty illegal to me. Well, so what? Nobody thought anything of recommending a bootlegger in Prohibition, did they? Well, that was violating a law that everybody knew would be repealed. Nobody can repeal a war, dearie. This is a serious business. Speaking of Prohibition, have you seen Uncle Dennis tonight? I don't think he's in yet. Oh, dear. You know, sometimes I worry about him. Yeah, so do I. He's like having an old shotgun around the house. You never know when he's loaded. <laughs> hey, ain't it about time for dinner? I'm going to cook it, you know. You're going to cook the dinner? Sure. How are we fixed for onions? We're just out. I looked this morning and... Come in. Hello there, kid. Oh, hello, Mr. Oldtimer. Hi, Oldtimer, you old fossil. Haul up a chair and give your friend Arthur one, too. Arthur who? Arthritis. <laughs> Did you get it, Molly? I says, give your friend Arthur a chair, and he says, Arthur who? Uh, and I says, Arthur. ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> That's odd. I pulled that one at the Elks this morning, and they killed themselves. I don't blame them, Johnny. They had nothing more to live for. <laughs> How are you making out with meat racing, old-timer? I don't pay any attention to it, Johnny. Oh. As a suit salesman said when he seen a 44 stub wouldn't fit his customer, I'll get along. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear, the Elks can have that one, too. <laughs> well, I was going to say, old-timer, if you ever run short of meat, I know a guy. Oh, uh, don't worry about me, Johnny. I never eat the stuff. Oh, you're a vegetarian, eh? Sure am, Johnny. Can't stand the sight of them. Well, if you don't eat meat or vegetables, then what do you live on? Got a little pension, daughter. Not much, but it keeps me going. She means what do you eat? Just breakfast and dinner, usually, Johnny. You see... No, I... no, no. What do you have for meals? Oh, fellow next door, most of the time. He comes over, brings a pail Look, of stuff... Look, old-timer, we're trying to find out what kind of food you eat. Nothing but the best, Johnny. <laughs> Mama made me promise once that I wouldn't eat no cheap... Mr. Old-timer. Hmm? <laughs> Look, you don't eat meat, you don't eat vegetables What do you eat? Chickens, daughter Chickens and eggs Eggs and chickens Fried eggs, scrambled eggs, boiled eggs, shirt eggs, stuffed eggs, deviled eggs And eggs then a dictionary <laughs> Roast chicken, fried chicken, stewed chicken, minced chicken, cold chicken, chicken a la king And I've threw away my alarm clock, kids What for? Had so much chicken I don't eat it anymore huh? Whenever I crow in the morning, I know it's time to get up <laughs> If he'd have wanted meat, McGee, were you going to send him to Eddie in the alley? Why, sure, I'd send him to Eddie in the alley. Eddie done me a favor, and I want to rescind Capate. <laughs> After all, I was got... Hey, I got to order some onions. Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Jimmy Sales Grocery on the Bully Mert. How are you, Mert? Oh, <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? This, eh? What's say, Mert? Your uncle. Caught a spy at the airplane factory. Good for him, McGee. I'll say. He knocked his lunch bucket off the shelf and dropped all his sandwiches that caught his pie. <laughs> What's say, Mert? Well, the guy was reaching for his pie, too <laughs> Okay, I'll call you later, Mert Thanks, Mert Now, look, McGee, about this package you've got in the refrigerator I want you to tell me exactly now what... Hello, folks Good evening, Mr. Wilcox Hi, Junior, what's cooking? Well, the restaurant, as far as I'm concerned tonight We're out of meat at our... Now, McGee <laughs> Out of meat, eh? <laughs> Don't worry about that, my friend. You can have a nice big steak tonight if you want it. And every night, in fact, you can have a nice big steak. Sure, but I've already told you the Army turned me down. Now, don't listen to McGee, Mr. Wilcox. He knows an acrobatic meat dealer. Acrobatic? Yes, alley up. <laughs> now, look here, son. As it happens, I got a few connections in this town. Yeah, you're on your way toward forming a few more, too, dearie. <laughs> With derby hats and flat feet. Oh, no. Not me. I know what I'm doing. Now, look, Junior. I happen to be in a position where I can get you all the meat I want, see? And any friend of hey, mine... Hey, what's is... the idea, pal? You a personal friend of the OPA? What's OPA got to do with it? He's on information, please. <laughs> now, look. Here's all you got to do. You go down the alley next to the snooker pool room on 14th Street, see? And you whistle twice, like a snipe. And when the guy opens the door, his name is Eddie. He's a friend of mine, see? You just tell him... Hey. To what is this, black market meat? Well, if it was any blacker, it would make midnight look like high noon. Well, gee whiz. If a guy is hungry for meat, he... Well, I'm not so hungry for meat. I want to patronize a rat in an alley to get a steak. Huh? What's the matter with you, Fibber? I always thought you were a pretty decent guy. Pour it on, Mr. Wilcox. Pour it on. Oh, my gosh. What's a little thing like it that? It isn't I... a little thing, pal. This is the dirtiest racket that's come out of the war. 
These crooks are buying up meat and selling it illegally without any sanitation or inspection and throwing the whole business of supply and demand out of kilter. How can the Army and Navy and war workers get the meat they need when so much of it is chiseled away into the black market? Well, yeah, but he whizzed up. You don't know where this meat came from or how old it is or what condition it's in or anything. We ought to revise the old Spanish-American war slogan. Remember the Tomaine. <laughs> well, now, look here, Junior. I was only trying to be helpful. Well, I you. don't want that kind of help, pal. Huh. I buy no bacterial beef from any back alley butcher. I'll pay with coupons and know that the dealer's responsible to the government. My very words, only louder. When I buy things, I want to know where they come from and who's back of them and what the quality is. That's why I'm proud to be selling Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. <laughs> Got a tradition of 50 years of conscientious quality behind it. Yeah, and I know where you can get some of that, too. <laughs> Just sneak up an alley in back of Racine and ask for Pete. <laughs> Why, <laughs> why, for year after year, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat has become a household symbol of your money's worth. The way it saves hours of housework with its shines-as-it-dries feature. The way it protects and preserves linoleum floors against dirt and dampness. You don't find any black market for products like glow coat fiber. Housewives are proud to be seen buying it, and dealers are proud to handle it. Okay, okay, okay. Quit shouting at me. I ain't selling meat. I was only trying yeah, to Yeah, you were only get... drumming up business for a few thieves, dearie. Nothing to be ashamed of, of course. No. Well, Fibber, if I were you, I'd be ashamed of... Say, what am I raving about? You couldn't have been serious. You were kidding. And I bit like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I thought you were actually recommending a black market. <laughs> <laughs> A good citizen like you. Oh, gosh. I'm going home and take off my pants and kick them all over the house. Well, McGee, why are you so red in the face? You know, Molly, this black market might be a serious thing at that. Sweetheart, sometimes you're quicker witted than at other times. <laughs> and this is one of the other times. <laughs> it's a serious thing. Well, gee whiz, I still can't see why it's so doggone representative to buy a couple of pounds of steak. You don't mean representative, you mean reprehensible. I thought reprehensible meant being able to pick up things with your toes. That's prehensile. Go on, prehensiles are stuff like frying pans, kitchen prehensiles. You're thinking of utensils. Utensils, I am not. Utensils are kind of like an appendix in your neck. Those are your tonsils. Well, then what's represented? That means somebody who asks for it. That's what I mean. Next time I want a steak, I'll send somebody else. McGee, huh? that package you have in the refrigerator, will you tell me truthfully this one? Thing? Ah, come in, come in, come in. Thank goodness. Hi, mister. Hi, Miss McGee. Oh, hi, sis. Oh, I'm mighty glad to see you all. Mighty glad. Sit down, sit down, sit down. How are conditions in the little red schoolhouse? It isn't red, I bet you it's brown. Oh, it is? You have to make allowances for Mr. McGee, dearie. Whenever he passes the schoolhouse, he sees red. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, sis. Don't let that throw you. Just sit up here on Uncle Fibber's lap and let's have a nice long chat, eh? What do you say? Well, gee, mister, I don't know. Oh, it's before you never had time to talk to me. Well, yeah, but that's... It isn't that he wants to talk to you now, either, little girl. He's just trying to put off talking to me. Go right ahead, McGee. I've got to sort out the laundry. Okay. Well, sis, what do you know? Hmm? I says, what do you know? Two times two is four, and cats have nine lives, and kangaroos carry their babies in their pockets, and they're ten dimes in a dollar. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> what is this? I was just telling you what I know, mister. Huh? And six times six is thirty-six, and there are forty-eight states. No, 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 no. That was just a metaphorical question, sis. What I meant was, uh, how are things in general? All right, I guess, mister. Anyway, they don't rattle. Huh? Hmm? What don't rattle? Things in general. Well, don't go it, sis. Why should things in general rattle? Because he swallowed them. Who did? General. Huh? That's my puppy's name, General. Oh. And, yeah. And he swallowed a spoon and a little perfume bottle and a watch chain and a marble... But they don't rattle. I shook him and I listened. 
Well, puppies are pretty hardy characters, sis. You mean like Mickey Rooney? What about Mickey Rooney? He's a hardy character, too. Oh. <laughs> My mama took me to the movies one night, and I saw him. Gee, he's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, he's a good little actor, sis. <clears throat> Ever see me in the movies? <laughs> Quit ducking the issue. You ever seen me in pictures? No, but my daddy did, he said. Oh, he did, eh? Well, what'd he say about them? I'll see you tomorrow, mister. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. I want to know what your old man, or what your father said. Come on, I'll tell me. Oh, yeah, and get my mouth washed out with soap. Nothing doing, mister. Goodbye now. No. <laughs> King's men sing Clementine. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine. Well, the miner, 49er, and his dog are Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine. You are lost and gone forever, very sorry, Clementine. She was right and like a fairy, and her boots were number nine. Packing cases, strung with laces, were the shoes for Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling. Mrs. McGee. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Have a nice Easter. Oh, just splendid, Mrs. McGee. Did you see us in the Easter parade? No, we didn't, Wimp. Did we miss something pretty spectacular? Indeed you did, Mr. McGee. Uh -huh. Sweetie Face was there with her new spring outfit on and violets in her hat, and there I was in my striped trousers and cutaways. Oh, striped trousers and cutaways. Yes, my striped trousers were cut away around the ankle so Sweetie Face could attach a chain to my leg. <laughs> He's always afraid I'll run away. <laughs> and I will, too. Well, good for you, Ben. Did you and Sweetie Face go calling Sunday afternoon? Sweetie Face did, but I didn't. Oh. She had arranged an Easter egg hunt for me. She hid the eggs and told me I couldn't go outdoors till I found a dozen. Any twelve of them, she said. How many eggs did she hide? Four. <laughs> well, I've got to be running along now, folks. I've got to go buy some meat for Sweetie Face. Meat? Hey, look, Wimp, if you want to save your coupons, I know a guy named Eddie. McGee, so... no, I won't have it. I have enough coupons already, Mrs. McGee. Huh? And a good thing, too. Sweetie Face eats so much meat. Though, of course, she should right now, you know. Why, Wimp? Well... <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really tell, but but you see, Sweetie Face is, well, she's eating for two now. Oh, for goodness sake, oh. Mr. Wimple, isn't that wonderful? Well, what do you know? So she's eating for two now, huh? Yes, herself and me. <laughs> Have 
Huh? Have what? The story of that package in the refrigerator. Oh, yes, the package. Well, sir, it all started way back in Peoria in 1912. Or was it 1913? For goodness sakes, how could a package in our icebox today start back in Peoria in 1913? It wasn't 1913. It was 1912. What was? The way this all started. In 1912... Just skip that part, dearie. Get to the package in the refrigerator. Okay, it was 1912. Years went by. And here I was in Wistful Vista, married to the most wonderful woman on earth. So one day... Does your black market handle baloney, too? (laughs) Now get to the point and stop stalling. Well, I was trying to. Well, sir, at 10 o'clock this morning... Oh, I... dear. Come in. Oh, Dr. Gamble. Come right in, doctor. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Fibber. Say, I left my gloves here last week, I think. Or did I? You sure did, Doc. Here they are right here. If they'd have fit me, you'd have never got them back, too, either. You know that. Oh, sure, sure. Well, thanks very much, folks. Sorry I can't stop to chat, but there's an epidemic of tomaine in town. I'm pretty rushed. Oh, is it the water, Doctor? No, the city water is perfectly pure, Mrs. McGee. I think it's this black market meat some people are buying. Not that any of them will admit it. You, uh, you you mean the meat ain't very good, Doc? Good. Why don't you grow up, McGee? Why should it be good? Does it go through the hands of government inspectors? Certainly not. Is it properly refrigerated? No. Do black market operators care if it's sanitary or not? No. As long as they get their filthy money, they don't care if their customers live or die. Well, you seem to feel very strongly about a doctor. Why shouldn't I, Mrs. McGee? I'm a doctor, and it infuriates me to know that some men are so low as to butcher meat illegally and throw away the parts that are needed for medical extracts and surgical sutures and insulin and adrenaline. People may think they need a steak now and then, but believe me, when they need adrenaline, they really need it. McGee, you look bilious. What's the matter? I am... I am... Go on a milk diet the rest of today and tomorrow. Huh? You're a nuisance. When you're well, I don't want you to get sick. Good day. That's it. I'm convinced. I've been a fool. I've been a chump to 29 decimals. You wait here. All right, dear. Again. There ain't any package in the refrigerator. I threw it out the window. I know. I was watching out this window. And I'm afraid I did you an injustice. Huh? I thought you had some meat in that package. You thought it? Well, what makes you think I didn't? Well, when you threw it out, Toops' hound dog came by and sniffed at it and walked away. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's one piece of advice you've probably all heard so many times that you'll duck your head if I hand it to you again. And yet there are so many car owners who aren't taking proper care of their automobiles that they need constant reminders to do so. What I'm suggesting is that you do not overlook the finish of your car. Perhaps you don't realize that the salt and other chemicals that are used on streets and roads in wintertime may be on your finish right now and will eat into the finish if they're not removed. If you haven't cleaned and polished your car since winter, you should do so right away. Use a cleaner that removes all that scum and dirt without injury to the finish. Such a cleaner is Johnson's Car New, the easy-to-use combination cleaner and polish that does two jobs at once. Both cleans and polishes with one application. You apply Car New, it dries to a white powder. You wipe off the powder and your car sparkles with almost forgotten newness. Make a note now to buy some Johnson's Car New this week. The cost is little, the benefits are great. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to make a point, we've tried to have fun with a subject which in itself is not very amusing. There's nothing humorous in children becoming ill from eating doubtful meat. It isn't particularly laughable to find crooks and saboteurs disrupting a fair and just system of distribution of essential foods. So in the interest of your own health and your own Americanism, buy only from a reputable dealer. And when anybody offers you a piece of beef without coupons, refuse it. Yes, it's probably a bum steer or part of one. Good night. Good night, all. The characters of the old timer and Wallace Wimple heard on this program are played by Bill Thompson. This program has reached you from Hollywood. Hollow Wilcox speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>